Hi guys, today let's make binder out of gum arabic pieces. But before we can make this into this, we need a couple of things. We need distilled water, gum arabic pieces and an airtight container, preferably one made out of glass. You want to make sure that you can clean it so there's no contaminations in your binder. The easiest way to do this is put it in your dishwasher on the highest level for the full program. For this recipe, we need twice the amount of water to gum arabic. Also, after this is finished, we will need honey and glycerin. Make sure the scale is set to zero before you start adding your gum arabic pieces. So again, I'm using twice the amount of water in weight over gum arabic. Now, you want to close the lid and just make sure everything is covered in water and let it sit for a while. Especially during the first day, you want to make sure to give it a good shake to make it dissolve evenly. After that, every day or two, just turn the jar around once or twice to make sure that it keeps moving to make grippy part dissolve into the water. You can speed the process up by using hot water or heating it up and putting it in a jar afterwards. I want to do it like this because good things take time. So while that's dissolving, let me answer a few questions you had for me. Can I use more water? Yeah, you can. But the thing is, when you use more water, it takes longer to evaporate when you make paint with it. Also, when you have a binder that's a little too fluid, some pigment particles, especially those of minerals, tend to sink down in a very liquid binder. So make sure your binder is sticky enough. Is there also such a thing as too much gum arabic in the water? Um, yeah and no. So you don't want to have it too thick because that would make paint making really hard, but you can add water during the process. Keep in mind that you have the amount of additives like honey and glycerin, as I do, um, that they're in proportion of the amount of gum arabic. So you used powdered gum arabic which is fine, uh, it's not my way, but it's a very good alternative to the pieces. Um, how much would you need for that? It's a very good question and you would need the same amount of gum arabic. The thing is that you need to keep in mind, I'm using these proportions with the knowledge of that a little bit of extra debris, the dirt in the gum arabic will be filtered out. So my binder will have a consistency with the weight of gum arabic, that is half of the weight of water, but a little bit of that weight will go off as well later on after the filtering. With clean gum arabic powder, that's not the case. So you might end up with a binder that's a little bit thicker than mine, but like I said before, that's completely fine. What if you're in need of binder today or tomorrow? Well, you could dissolve these crystals or gum arabic powder which is even quicker in hot or boiling water. The thing with that is you need to keep stirring and it needs to sit for a few hours or preferably overnight to settle. So keep that in mind that you cannot make a binder that you're going to use within the hour. So is there also an alternative to gum arabic? There is. Aquazole. Aquazole dissolves far more quickly in water and it can even dissolve in alcohol which makes it interesting for very hydrophobic pigments if you don't want to do that. But downside of Aquazole is very expensive in comparison with gum arabic. How to make binder and how this works will be done in a video later on because like I said before I like the traditional way and the traditional way will always be gum arabic. So the gum arabic is dissolving and before we can filter that, before we can add our honey and glycerin, what can we do? 
If you haven't done it before, go check out the previous video and prep your slab before we can start working with binder and pigment. If you just made your binder but don't have any pigment yet, go check out the links down below in the description of the video. Those are affiliate links which help me with a little bit of income, but also I gave you some great sources for great pigments that you can start with. So this was part one of Making Binder. I will see you soon for part two. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And after part two, we can start making paint. I'm looking forward to it, guys. See you next time.